Chag Sameach, the festival of Sukkot. The festival of Sukkot, in addition to the Sukkah itself, our newfound home for a week. And I'm very proud of the fact that for the first time in a long time this year, we have a special sleep sukkah on the porch outside of our bedroom. But in addition to the mitzvah of Sukkot and Sukkah is the mitzvah of the four species. And the four species, first and foremost, thanks God for the agricultural bounty. The particular four species require an abundance of rain, especially the willow. And they're indigenous to Israel. But it's really thanking God for our agricultural bounty. The rabbis, however, focus on the fact that the four species should be held together in one bond or bind. And what's fascinating about this is, from that perspective, it's a continuity of our prayer throughout the Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur season, in which we ask for the entire world to be united in one bond in the service of the Divine. The rabbis go a step further. And they see each of the species representing another kind of Jew. The etrog has a beautiful taste and a beautiful fragrance represents the Jew who has both Torah learning and good deeds. The myrtle, good deeds without Torah learning. The lulav, the palm branch, Torah learning without good deeds. Fragrance represents the good deeds because it wafts further and affects others whereas Torah learning in itself affects only the individual himself. And the willow has neither good deeds nor Torah learning. And we hold all of these together as one. Because God is concerned about all the Jews together. Because the Jewish community should be proud to take in every kind of Jew. And that you're not really a responsible Jewish community until you do that. And the family also should be willing to take in every one of its members. And hold them together. And celebrate them. What's fascinating is that on Hoshana Rabbah we isolate the willow, the Hoshana. And we do the circuits only with the Hoshana. First we take all four and then with Tane Emunim at a certain point after the first seven circuits we put down the are the three, we're left only with the willow, and I learned this from my teacher, from Rav Soloveitchik, we shake the Hoshana alone, just as we shook the lulav, the myrtle, and the palm branch. The Hoshana is separate. And then we bang the Hoshana on the earth. The question is, why do we separate the Hoshana? And why do we give the Hoshana special treatment? Especially 
if the Hoshana or the willow is the one which we claim has neither Torah learning or good deeds. I'd like to explain, first of all, in terms of one of the truest messages that I know in life. It's probably a cliché to say, never judge a book by its cover. But very often, within Jewish life, you see someone who looks very much like an etrog. But when you really get to know him, I mean, if you really got to see him in various circumstances, you'd see that he's much more a Hoshana than an Etro. And there are many people who look like a willow, like a Hoshana, like they have nothing. And when you get to know them, you're very much surprised by their depth, their insight, and their true and deep religiosity. Some people who appear to be the most observant are the least observant. And those who appear to be the least observant are the most religious. It's a very important message to remember. I would add one more thing. This is the period of the Hoshana. And what do I mean? I remember in the old Machzorim for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, specifically Yom Kippur, or Vinu Malkeinu. Right before the last of Vinu Malkeinu, our father, our king, Chaneinu Va'aneinu, have compassion on us and answer us. We have no good deeds to in any way boast of. Forgive us, save us, not because we deserve it, but for your name's sake. Because you've promised that on this day you'll forgive every Jew and perhaps every human being. And I remember as a child going to the synagogue with my grandparents, and right before this last Ovinu Malkeinu in the small letters it would say, now close the curtain of the ark and recite this last Ovinu Malkeinu in a whisper, because we're not going to shout out and sing in exultation that we have no deeds. Well, Rabbi Yitzchak got up in his synagogue. He made the switch. And Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev opened the ark after the regular individual who had closed it. And insisted that we, everyone sing Ovinu Malkeinu. He said, that's the greatness of Yom Kippur. That's the greatness of the Jewish people. More importantly, that's the greatness of God. God promises us that on Yom Kippur He'll forgive every single Jew, even the one without Torah knowledge and without good deeds. Two reasons. Because He loves us. Without any conditions at all. And secondly, because we must always remember that the individual who now does not have good deeds in Torah learning can change all that overnight. That his potential remains amazing. And that's why we isolate the Hoshana. Gratitude to God. That God forgives us because he loves us, because we are his children whether we have Torah learning or not, whether we have good deeds or not. And second of all, because we understand that everyone has untold potential and we must never forget it. 
Chag Sameach. Enjoy your Hoshana.